Hard to believe we're coming up on the midway point for 2023, and it's safe to say that this year is proving a lot of people wrong. Well, kind of wrong. I should say two out of the three markets proving the experts wrong, and the other two just, well, plugging along and kind of doing their thing. If you're looking to hear about the Massachusetts real estate market data for the month of May for single-family homes, condos, as well as multifamily properties, then you're in the right place. Okay, but first, if you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then please consider subscribing. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube guys. This data is extremely important to know if you're in the market to buy or sell a home, going to be in the market in the future, or just want to know what's going on in regards to what is most likely your biggest and most important investment. But let's unpack this crazy market. But first, hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any real estate questions, then no, I'm here to help. Let's start with single families. In May of 2023, we saw 3,173 homes sell for an average sales price of 788 grand. Now compared to May of 2022, this represents a year over year decrease in the number of sales by 22%. The average for the first four months of the year is 24.5%, so this was a mild improvement. As I've said multiple times, sales levels are going to continue to be down for another three or four months or so. Now, the delta between the year over year should start to narrow. By this time last year, interest rates, well, they were on the rise, and people had been rushing to get into houses before they were going to go up even more. But the pent-up demand, it was starting to wane this time last year. Now, compared to May of 2022, home prices were up by 1.2% year over year. Frankly, I was a little surprised here. I thought this would have been a little higher. It's still up 1.2%, which is a very sustainable level. So let's take what we can get here. But the 1.2% increase was the lowest year over year gain we've seen so far this year. The max was the 4.3% that we saw back in March. And doing a year-over-year -year analysis for the first five months of the year, we've actually seen home prices go up by 2.13% in the state of Massachusetts. So another month of sales being down and prices being up. Let's dive into the numbers just a little bit deeper and analyze what, quite frankly, all this means. Not sure if you remember, but last month was a pretty severe drop in the amount of sales as we dropped down to the 2009 levels. Now, this month had a bit of a rebound. The 3,159 sales levels from May of 2023 essentially put us above the activity levels that we saw back in May of 2011. For the most part, this is where we've been seeing sales levels for the last six or seven months or so. So it's nice to be back to those kind of new normal levels. But all in all, we've now seen 23 consecutive months of year-over-year -year sales declines. I know this is not a pretty looking graph, and that's okay. But also know that we should start seeing an end to this trend in the coming months. Now, as we have discussed on many occasions, the health of the market is really wrapped all around the inventory levels. There has been no relief here. If our sales levels are reminiscent of the sales of 2011, then let's compare this year's data to, to that year. In May of 2011, we had 24,657 single-family homes on the market. Today, we've got 3,615. That is nearly seven times less the number of homes on the market that a buyer has to look at today. It's still a very rough market to be home buying in. In May, we actually saw inventory levels dip below the levels we saw back in 2022. This means that inventory is now the second lowest level in history. Our inventory levels in May were 12.7% below May of 2022, with them being only 9.2% above the lowest levels in history, which was back in 2021. So sales levels were off 22%, while inventory levels were down by nearly 13% when compared to last year. The demand in the market far outstrips the amount of supply that we currently have in that marketplace. I know I've said it before, but it just needs to be repeated. The story of the real estate market is, and it's going to continue to be, all about inventory levels. Not sales levels, inventory levels. And not an inventory level comparison to last year or 2021. If you believe there's going to be price corrections like we saw back in 2008, then you need to compare those inventory levels to 2009 as well as 2010. There will be no housing price correction with inventory levels this low. The May single family market is, well, more of the same. Lower sales levels, the low inventory levels with home price appreciation. But keep in mind that not all markets are seeing home price appreciation in Massachusetts. I will surely be releasing a video that goes over the top 10 appreciating markets and the top 10 depreciating markets in Massachusetts. It's a must watch video. But back to the May single family data. We heard it nonstop about how home prices were down from their peak. 
You have also heard me on repeat about how home prices follow trends and peak at certain times of the year. So let's check in on this to see if I was right and if the line about home prices going down by all the experts was right. I'm thinking I was. Well, how about that? Home prices were up month over month for a high point so far this year. And how about that? Again, it looks like home prices in 2023 are following the same trend. Any bets that next month they're going to go up again and that will be the peak? And how about some more bets and price that home prices will retreat in the fall and more experts are going to start talking about how home prices are headed down while completely ignoring the trend. Now, for the month of May in the condo market, we saw 1,608 condos closed in Massachusetts for an average sales price of $701,000. Let's start with the actual number of sales. We saw a big improvement here compared to last month when they were down a painstaking in whopping 35%. This month, they were down 23.3%, which is a level that is much more normal. Now, the May numbers are a little shy of May of 2012 when 1,710 units sold which is again, a level that is back to what we have started to see as our new normal pace. Now the sales levels are following the trend that we've seen every year where they increase through the spring months. And this is really great news. So what about the inventory levels? Well, they were up a little bit. So it wasn't anything to get excited about. Inventory for the month of May was up 6.4% compared to May of 2022, but 2023 levels were also down 6.4% when you compare it to May of 2021. Take a look at this chart to compare our inventory levels to May of 2012 to now. We currently have three times more inventory on the market today than we did back then. And sales levels were down by 23%, while inventory was down year over year by 6.4%. Many equate falling sales levels with falling prices. So what happened here? The average sales price of nearly $701,000 represents a 3.1% year-over-year increase in the average sale price. Now, this was also a 1.9% month-over-month sales price, which is completely useless stat, but we say it anyway. Now, this means that we've actually seen home prices up year-over-year for four out of the last five months in 2023 for the condo market. And year to date, we've seen the average condo price up by 3.4%. That is a respectable and sustainable market gain. So what does the yearly trend for the average sales prices of condos show? Just like we had predicted, it is going up just like it did in 2022. And it's our prediction that it will do it again next month with June being the pricing peak. And yes, there are some outlier points, I admit it, but that trend line continues. Everything looks good here. Yes, sales are down, but it has not led to a surge of inventory. This market, like the single family market, remains very competitive in a lot of areas throughout Massachusetts. And now for my very quick and well, shameless plug. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home, then reach out to me today as I would be honored to help guide you through the process. Now under the multifamily market, it's well, more of the same. This market is struggling and a great place for someone to find a deal if they can find one, that is. In May of 2023, we saw 340 multifamily properties sell for an average sales price of $709,000. Now the 340 units sold is 48.7% below the activity levels that we saw back in May of 2022. Crazy that sales levels are off nearly 50% from what we saw in the month, same month back in 2022. I mean, 50%. When you look at this comparison chart, it's just ugly. Now, part of the ugliness may just be due to the limited amount of inventory. This extreme inventory shortage is definitely restricting some sales in the multifamily market, but 50%, probably not that much, but it's definitely something here. Now, we currently have 636 multifamily properties on the market in the entire state of Massachusetts. We only have 636 properties on the market. That's just nuts. We're about three and a half times below the inventory levels that we saw back in May of 2022. Meanwhile, inventory levels are down by 45.3% when compared to May of 2022. It's another record low month for inventory. Now, this brings us to the average price for a multifamily property. In May of 2022, the average sales price was $740,845. This means that year over year, the average sales price for a multifamily property was down by 4.3%. This means that for the first five months of the year over year analysis, we've actually seen sales levels down by 35.3% and prices down by 2.4%. As an interesting note, this is pretty much exactly what we saw last month when we were doing the first four month calculation. So not much changed this month, quite frankly. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? 
all of my information, it's in the description below. I always love talking about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a house next nine or 90 days, then I'd love to chat with you and just hear about your real estate goals. You can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Just fill in your name, your contact information, and then I'm going to reach out to you. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a line in the comment section. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.